Alright lads and lasses, today we're in Scotland and we're doing an overnight colo, colo, overnight solo camping trip. We're going to have a, a wall blanket to sleep with, a tarp to sleep under and a wee steak to cook over the fire. Let's get to it. What do we have here? There's a wee little dungeon. A wee bit suspicious if you ask me. We're here. I would not recommend doing that. However, that rapid. A bit dangerous if you're alone. But yeah, we've got steak and oh, honey mustard sauce for tea. We've got bacon for brekkie. Or snacking, porridge, you know, bits and bobs. Spent about six hours driving up here yesterday, and then another two, two and a half hours walking. Oh, worth it. Literally in the middle of nowhere. No one's anywhere. So I had three tins of Guinness for tonight. I mean I threw in my bag. I forgot they were in my bag. So now I've got two and a half tins of Guinness. Clever. Welcome back. As you saw before, that Scottish guy was saying we're in Scotland. And yeah, need to make a shelter right now. Put a tarp up, make some form of bed, and uh, get cosy. Let's crack on. Right, there's plenty of deadfall. There's literally trees, 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 trees everywhere. And the big, decent sized logs as well. So we should be able to whip up a bed. <laughs> I'll do that first. Make the bed first. That's the wood we've got. Should be 
enough for the bed. All I've got to do is clean them up, get any uh, spikes that come off them, get two base logs to level out the bed. Then I need to go down to the lock, get some rocks, get some rocks from the locks for the fire because you don't want to put it on this ground. It's too wet and it's just dangerous. So yeah. Also happy Halloween everybody. Happy Halloween. You little spooky kids. So I've not eaten yet and I can't start making a fire yet because I've got too much to do. Too much to do before a fire gets put on. So I'm eating a cold tin of beans. Sue me. Sue me. This is the life of cold beans. It's in a bit. Right, we're on a move. Found a new flatter area, which when you're sleeping, you want to be as comfy as you can be. And it's got a better view, which is always, bo <coughs> always a bonus. Right, I've had an idea. You could pull. Down from the so we could put the tarp leaning down from the back of this fallen branch, clean away the undergrowth, and then use that to make the bed. Then we don't have to worry about fires because we're on stones and sand anyway. So I think that's what we'll do. So, the camera's broken, the actual decent camera is broke. So now I'm just gonna have to use my phone. I've had it, I've had it a week and it's broken. I've had the camera a week and it's broke. Fuming. Cursed wind. So I was hoping that this video would would be really good. I thought oh, I'll come all the way up here, six hour drive, 
I'll we'll go on a two hour, two hour, two hour trek to get up here. Then the wind just stopped. Nah. Right, so I need to get some padding for the bed. Uh, this is what I've done so far. So we've got a wall there with rocks, wall there with rocks. I'm gonna fill that in with the tree furs. And that'll be like a kind of mattress thing. Two more of them. They should be good. Woo. So there we are. The new silent pine mattress has arrived. Pretty comfy. rations of bacon for the morning. Uh, we've got this honey mustard sauce which is now soggy with Guinness and we've got two porridges also for the morning which are also Guinness flavoured now which isn't the worst flavour to have I guess and then we've got two remaining soldiers soldiers I don't really consider them soldiers but yeah that's the food we're going to get the fire cooking here. It'll be really safe because there's no grass, no nothing underneath, it's just sand and stone. So we should be okay. Really gutted about this. You never know, it might work. No. So the auto focus is just broken on it, so it will. It will only focus literally like this far in front of the camera lens, so. Oh well. Oh well. You know, it is what it is like. It is what it bloody is. Right, so what I want to do here is just make it a bit higher because the bed's, the bed's there and it's slightly slopes down a bit so I want the fire to be on level with the bed. So I'm just going to lay out a few rocks to get it sort of even. So this is the only time really where I actually need the camera zoomed in but oh well. If you remember in the start of the video, I got some more birch bark off that tree. So, we'll use all this to start the fire with. Right, so I've got some pine twigs here. I've got the birch bark there. And then we'll just gradually build up in size with with the sticks and stuff. So the trick is with birch bark is to just rip it up as fine as you can. So you get the best uh, use from it for stuff like this. So once you rip them all up, you get them in your hand and just rub them all together.
There we go. And just put it all together. And voila. So what I've done is I have I've duct taped my phone to the tripod that was on this camera. Better than nothing, isn't it? Better than nothing. And this bed is so comfy. There's a rock right here. So it's kind of like a back support. Live in La Vida Loca. But yeah, if you're watching, it's not a good start, but please subscribe if you want to. I want to get to a thousand before the end of the year. That's my goal. It's a big ask. Very big ask, but I'll get my camera fixed and we'll keep the content coming. But yeah, when this um, fire dies down and it's just embers, we'll get the steak cooking. Okay, so I've just warmed up the honey and mustard sauce and now it's time to cook the steak. The moment of truth. How how is it done? Beautiful. Whoever said you can't be glamorous while camping. The steak was pretty good. The steak was delish. It would have been perfect. It would have been amazing if camera hadn't have fallen over because I've only got 30% of the phone battery left if that so I'm going to be struggling recording off off my phone but you know there's bigger problems in the world than a low phone battery so let me know what you think of the video is it good is it not what improvements could I have made? You know, it's all it's all useful because everybody's different, everyone's got different preferences. It's good to know what, what to do to tailor it differently. But for the time being I'll keep trying. I'll tell you what, I will be toasty tonight, I'll be so warm. Fire's just hot enough as itself. And then I've got a blanket and that sleeping bag liner. Beautiful. Cooking away, look at that. Little cheeky snack.
All right, lads and lasses, I'm going to call it a night right now. But I will see you in the morning. Good night. All right, guys, it's, uh, it's about three in the morning. And the fire just gone out completely. And I woke up freezing. So I've just got the fire stocked back up. Oh, you bet jelly. Good morning. It's um, about half six, seven in the morning. I'm just gonna make some porridge, uh, cook some bacon, and then pack up. Pack up and leave. So there's our porridge water and some water for a cup of tea. And then that's the bacon. And we've got some easy bagged golden syrup Quakers. Right, well, breakfast is pretty much made. Smells so good. Oh my goodness. Porridge, tea, bacon for however many people. It smells amazing, man. Great lads and lasses, thank you for watching. This has been my overnight camping trip in the Highlands of Scotland. I hope you've enjoyed it, even though we've had a few hurdles over the way. If you're not subscribed, feel free to do so. I'll catch you next time. So, some random guy has just walked over as I'm packing up and said that there's a hermit that lives just in the woods and he's made like an old log cabin. So I'm gonna go down there, have a little cup of tea with him I'll try to film a bit of it, but I've only got like 5% battery left, so I might struggle. But we'll see you there. So, I just met Ken and Davey. Ken has lived here for 40 years. <sighs> and he's a hermit. We've just been sat in his cabin with him having a cup of tea. Lovely guy. Apparently there's a documentary online about him. So I'll whew, try to link that in, in the description below. <sighs> yeah. So Ken has lived in the woods for 40 years. And there's another guy called Davey. And he lives in a tent and he's lived in a tent about two miles away from Ken. And he's lived there for about 15 years. And what they've got to do if they want to get any food is they've got to travel They've got to walk four miles to the nearest train station and then get a train to the nearest, like, town. Crazy. So, yeah. I went in, um, made me a cup of tea, and we just chatted for about an hour. You're a nice guy. Cool. He's made his lodge and his house all out of wood. He's made it all himself. And um, he's got like a, a guest house for when, say, family visit or friends visit. I was literally just um, packing all my stuff away, and then Davy just walks over. And I'm like, all right. And he was like, all right, what are you doing over here? I was just explaining that I was camping. And basically Ken had a lodge and um, some people came and just burnt it down, like some kids just came and burnt it down. So ever since then, he's been really wary of, he's been really wary of uh, people stopping on the lake, on the lock, should I say. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a bit, it's very stripped back. There was no lights, no electric, nothing. Just a fire. Um, 
Garmin satellite phones. But apparently there's a documentary that's been made on him. And uh, America heard about it and it was on CNN News and all that. Which is pretty crazy. But I just thought I'd explain a bit about him. I didn't want a video on it because I felt, uh, felt like I was intruding if I was filming it. So we just sat down and we just chatted. We had, we had a cup of tea. And then he showed me around his, uh, his little sanctuary. But yeah, you know. Pretty cool, I had no idea that anyone would have been there. I just expected that I would have been on my own to see how far out I was. And I know I shouldn't have been walking on the train tracks, but rail line, uh, Scotland Rail's on strike. So there's literally like one train yesterday and there was one train today. And I, lit I just made it off the tracks about five minutes after and then that train came. And I was on the tracks for an hour. So that's pretty crazy, it's pretty lucky. Because there was that tunnel. I'll put a picture up. But there was that tunnel which was a fair a fair distance of walking. So if it had come whilst I was in there, I would have been a bit unlucky. But yeah, so now we've got a nice long six hours journey. I would have loved to have filmed more, but I literally, right, I, I looked at my portable charger before I left and I thought, nah, I won't need it. I don't go on my phone. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I won't be using it. But if I had brought it, then I'd have been able to record pretty much everything on my phone, whereas I was just being like skimpy with it and trying to record as little, little as possible to preserve my battery. Because by the time I got back to the car, I, I only had 2% left. But, you know, things happen. It's all just a learning curve. I had to wake up at about 12 o'clock, like midnight, <coughs> and um, reorganize the tarp so that it was more of a tent shape, like a teepee shape, because I was just getting wet through. And the fire kept going outside, stalled that up a few times. But yeah, all in all, I'd say it was very eventful. I did not expect to meet a, a hermit who's lived in the woods for 40 years. Davey was a lovely guy.